Hello again. Today we're going to tie this caddis pupa. Um, this uses a really cool material. It's really cheap as well. It's an organza ribbon. You can make all sorts of really cool bodies with this. It really simulates sort of gills on a nymph really well. I make some damsel nymphs with this stuff too, which uh, which I may do in a future video actually. Um, the rest of the fly is uh, pheasant tail um, for the back of the nymph and pheasant tail fiber for the horns. You can use bronze mallard for the horns, which is probably a stronger fiber maybe, um, but I don't have any. So I'm just going to use, uh, whoops, pheasant tail fiber like this. Uh, the thorax is just natural seals fur and there's a tungsten bead on there. So I'll explain what I'm doing as I always do as I go along. Um, in the vise, we're just going to pop a size 12 um, heavyweight style grub hook. Now I've waxed the thread. Thread is dark brown uni 60 and that's a black three millimeter tungsten bead. I'm just going to run the thread through the wax just to help me get it started. And in nice, neat, touching turns, I'm just going to get a bit behind the bead and then we're going to run the thread down till I get to about where the um, barb is on the hook. All right. So now we're going to add some pheasant tail fiber. Um, this is just, you know, fibers off of a pheasant tail uh, stalk and we're going to tie that in. I'm just going to neaten the ends up because we don't actually need, um, we don't actually need the tips. I'm just going to catch it on and I'm going to come down to a little ways around the bend. About there, that's about right. I'm going to take a turn off actually. And now I'm going to tie the Aganza ribbon. Now, what I've done is I've cut a piece from the edge, and with your needle, so I can do this so you can see what I'm doing. If I can just get it started, you've got to take all the fibers that run lengthways. I've got a needle in there, and I'm just pulling them off just like that, okay? And that gives you just the fibers that run sideways on, on the ribbon. Just make, make sure you get them all, which I think I've got them all here. Whoops. Oh, no, there's one more there, look. We'll take him out, and then we tie in this organza ribbon. Now I've cut it to a little bit of a taper, and just see if, we're just gonna catch that on. If it's mis misbehaving, just, Pinch a loop to catch it on. And then I'm just going to pull it in a little bit. Mind your pheasant tail. And then I'm going to wrap up. Nice and tight with a nice wax thread. Now, I'm going to come round with a turn of the organza. And I'm going to bring the pheasant tail over. And then I'm going to bring the organza over the pheasant tail. Now I'm going to pull the pheasant tail back. Oh, I'm just trying to do that a little bit better. It slipped on me there. What I think I might do, because I normally do this in my hands, but I'm just going to pop it into some hackle pliers, just, just so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So we'll take a turn of the organza, and then pull the pheasant tail over. Do a turn of the organza. Sorry if my hands are getting in the way. Turn of the organza. And this stuff's quite strong. You can pull it fairly tight. Move the pheasant tail out the way. Turn of the organza. Move the pheasant tail over. And then we'll, we just, just keep going up like this. When I've done a couple of turns, I'm gonna do two turns of the organza underneath the pheasant tail. So do two turns of organza, bring over the pheasant tail, bring the organza over the pheasant tail. And this will just help me give a bit of taper to the fly. 
We're going to do two more turns. Whoops, a daisy. Bring the pheasant tail over. And now I'm just going to do another two turns. Bring the pheasant tail over and have a look. Yeah, it's okay. I'm happy with that. So I just tied both bits off at the same time, just like that. Make sure you've got plenty of wax on the thread here because you really do need the grip. Once you've tied them both in well, hold them all back. Come in with some nice sharp scissors. Trim the pheasant towel. Trim the organza. Mind in your thread. Come on. There we go. Now, I'm going to double check my wax. And I'm just going to tie down over everything like that. To make sure everything's really tied in. And there's your body. Makes a really cool body. Really cool body. So now I'm going to come in with some. Uh, now I'm going to come in with a some pheasant tail fibre because I want a little bit of a thorax cover. So I'm going to tear some away. I'm going to catch it on. A couple of turns. Trim the waist. Come on. Oh, there we go. And now I'm going to come in with some seals fur. Now this is natural seals fur. It's really spiky, which is just what we want. So I'm just going to dub that onto the thread. Spin it on nice and tight, actually, for this bit. You can always brush it out if you feel the need. I'm going to bring this up. And I'm going to do a turn and tighten now. Like that. I'm a fairly chunky thorax on this fly. I'm going to run my thread through it a little bit. Pull everything back and tie down. Now any really long fibres we can just get rid of. It is a very, very spiky dubbing. Here we go, I'm happy with that. And now we need some horns. So I'm gonna take, like I said, bronze mallard probably would be better for this. But I'm gonna take two fibers off of the pheasant tail. And I want two that look really nice. Um, what I mean by that is some of them might be a bit bedraggled. The pheasant tails that I get are, um, are birds that have been shot so so um they can have some damage on them now we're going to take two pheasant tail fibers we're going to line the tips up and hold them in my hands make sure the tips are nicely lined up make sure i've got plenty of wax on the thread and now for horns i like them to come a little bit past the body or at least level with the back of the hook so I'm gonna have a look I'm gonna see what they look like I'm happy with that we're gonna pinch them on we're gonna tie them in now this is quite a weak fiber sometimes these horns don't last that long but I found it hasn't really made a difference to the fly I quite like I quite like tying the horns in so now we're gonna split the horns I'm going to bring my pheasant tail over. Just going to have a look. I just want those horns to be a little bit further forward. So it's always good to check. I'm going to add a little bit more dubbing. I'm just going to bring them forward a little bit with the dubbing. Because I really want the horns coming right off the back of the head, right? That's where they are. So I'm going to come over. A bit more dubbing, that do. Should bring all the dubbing back, tie in front. That's better. Now take two more pheasant tail fibres. Let's have a little look. Those two there, they'll do me. 
You do do. Let's choose those two there. Always be fussy with the fly, always. So, as we did before, you're going to make sure those tips of the pheasant tail are lined up. Come on, you little monkeys. There we go. Sometimes it's difficult to see. It's quite a fine fibre. Take your measure again. Happy with that. Come over. Whoops. Catch it on. Make sure they're bang on the top. Nice and straight. Pull them back. Tie down. Come in and trim the waist. Now split the horns, come through with the thorax cover, just catch it, just now, just catch it, tighten it up, have a look, and those horns are just a little bit long, but that's okay because we can just shorten them, so just hold on to them again, come back. It's so easy to come back, come back, shorten, tie them down again, right on the top, that's better, I'm more happy with that, trim, split the horns, sometimes you need a dubbing needle to split the horns, split the horns, whoops daisy, come on, grab your pheasant tail, wiggle it in between, come on. Wiggle it in between. Hold your horns back. Come in with a loose turn of thread. Make sure everything is where you want it. Uh, let's tie forward a little bit. Just got to get these horns right. These horns, in case you haven't noticed, are the trickiest part of this fly. So we're going to split them again. Hold them back, come in, that's better. Pull the thorax cover tight, another turn, wax the thread. Come in front, snip the pheasant tail, Ooh, there we go. Look at your fly, I'm just gonna add a little bit more dubbing just to cover up those thread wraps. Doop -de -doop -de -doo. Tie that up. Come round. That's better. And then, like we do with these nymphs, all we're going to do is varnish on the thread. Grab your whip finish tool, which is hiding. Why does it always hide from me? Oh, there it is. Come here. Grab your whip finish tool. And then come in. One, two, three, four's plenty. Tighten up, trim, have a look at your fly. There's a little bit of a fibre there I don't, whoops a daisy, I don't like when you're doing this. Just be careful you don't, you don't um, cut your horns off. And there we have it. That is uh, a little caddis pupa. Um, you know, if you want, you can come in with a with a brush and sort of brush out some of the uh, seal's fur for some legs. Um, this this one's actually caught me loads of fish in the river and the chalk streams that I fish has actually done me really well. This fly. Um, and there you have it. Not too difficult to tie, like everything I tie really. I try and make things as simple as I can. And um, and there she is. Anyway. Thanks again for watching. If you like the video, then please hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.